Hello, Jen here, and I have a layout for you for the Wild Whisper Design team. I'm using the Just Because collection this week. I am loving this collection. As you can see, as I'm sort of cutting all of these papers, you'll get a chance to see the patterns, and they're just so fun. And there's, there's no theme to this. It's just because. So it's just really fun, bright, bold colors. The papers all have different feels to them. So uh, you can see here some have more of the watercolor feel. This one looks like spray paint. Uh, the one with the the roses that you'll see or big rosettes kind of has that artsy feel to it. Some of them are really geographic. Some of them are more loose like this one. It just, it's a lot of fun to use and it's a great collection for those pictures that you just have. I'm going to say just a lot. <laughs> so, so be prepared. That is the word of, of the video. Uh, but I, I really enjoyed kind of playing around with all of these patterns and when I was trying to think of how I wanted to put this layout together what sort of design I wanted to do I was sitting at my desk and as I moved my arm it sort of pushed all of my papers and staggered them a little bit and all of the manufacturer strips with just a little bit of each pattern sort of showed and I thought oh that looks really cool actually because they've done a really great thing with their manufacturer strips this time where they're just a big solid color so there is uh, the teal and then that sort of lighter mint color a yellow a gray and then one is a black one that says just because and the other is white and says just because and so I thought this actually works really nicely as as layers to build my own paper so I went ahead and did that and I didn't measure anything I have different um, spaces in between all of the manufacturer strips so some of the patterns are showing a little bit more than others I just I did it really randomly and then the space that was left up at the top I filled it with that last piece of paper I've kind of been hoarding this paper because I just really love it and I know that they had I think they were inspired by leaving this space and using this paper as a full background and kind of having this open space that you could play with to put a photo and so I kind of had been keeping my eyes on that and as I've been using up that paper I've been trying to conserve that one section that I knew I wanted to have a photo so this worked out perfectly that I just happened to have enough space at the top of all of my manufacturer strips to put that that chunk of paper that I really wanted to use so I went ahead and did that and I trimmed it all up I just used a, a piece of random paper from my stash that I didn't think I would I would necessarily use anytime soon so that I had a template for the size and that way I didn't make it too too tall or too short over the 12 by 12 size uh, and then once I had all of my papers together, I took a little bit of acrylic paint and I kind of painted out the section where I want my photo to go. And I felt like it just really needed that because my photo would have gotten lost in all of those patterns and bold colors. You can see here, I'm just using a teeny tiny little photo from a photo booth. I don't have the full strip. I just have this one photo. Um, I framed the rest of them, but when we were taking pictures, we were trying to do really cute ones. And then uh, the very last one, we weren't paying attention and suddenly the countdown started. And so my hubby and I just naturally made funny faces. And my daughter, the way that I'm kind of holding her, she's got her like cute little chubby cheeks puffed out. She's only about four months old in this photo. And so we just thought it was this super hilarious picture that kind of happened just because. And I've always kept it as a reminder to, you know, just loosen up a little bit and enjoy life and not not be so serious all the time because I think sometimes I get stuck in my head and I worry a lot so that picture is always being with me as a reminder and I thought it's perfect to scrap right now it doesn't really have a theme it's a very kind of washed out not quite sepia not quite black and white photo and I think in any other 
type of layout, it would really have gotten lost. But in this one, all of the patterns and everything are just so much fun that it highlights it more than loses it. At least I think so. I hope you guys think so too. Uh, but I did want to paint some white there just so that your eye has a place to rest when it's looking at the photo and that really makes it the focal point. So while my paint is drying, I did some black too to kind of, um, I wanted to have that white space, but I didn't want it to be really starkly white and empty. I wanted to still keep that feeling so that black and white stripes, uh, striped paper that you see is quite prominent. And so I sort of wanted to, to stick to something similar to that. You don't really see a lot of it. Uh, but it just kind of capped with the feeling and then I splattered some white and black around too where I thought I might have a few little embellishment clusters. And while all of that was drying, I went ahead and matted my photo. So I picked papers that were more solid except for the one with the rosettes. I just wanted to get a touch of yellow into the layers and that was the only one I had that was the most solid color I guess you could say but I didn't want a ton of pattern in my picture layers because that can be really distracting too and again it would have taken over from the photo so I matted I put two pieces of foam in my layers of of mats as well because I feel like the dimension is also something that will really help the photos to stand out and not not blend too much into the background of the papers and then um, I'm just touching up some of the black because I have it watered down now from splattering it. Uh, I wanted to make sure it stayed really nice and solid. So I just went over it a couple of times as it was drying. If there were any places where it was starting to, to fade a little bit with the drying process, I just wanted to touch that up. And I just used my heat tool to, to dry it because I was being impatient. <laughs> so a little bit of a tape runner and a little bit of wet glue. I wanted to make sure that that really stuck down nicely with all those layers of paint. And it's a little bit heavy because of all of the, the layers of paper and foam. So I was being a little extra cautious. And now I'll make my little embellishment clusters, very tiny, very simple, because there is so much already going on with this paper. I had three of the flare left that come with the collection, so I'm just going to put them in three different places, kind of in those same places where I, I did my splatters. I like that I did my splatters before I put down my embellishment clusters, because I feel like it really adds a randomness to the whole paper um, because the splatters were just kind of because they were just because I felt like I wanted them in this spot and this spot and this spot and then the embellishments kind of followed afterwards so the embellishments stay really nice and clean and then the splatters are in the background does that make sense I don't know if that makes sense but uh, to me I just felt like it's not what I would normally have done. Normally I would splatter at the end to complement my embellishment clusters. So I kind of flipped that a little bit this time. And I also found a really tiny little foam glitter heart that came from Scrapbook and Cards today. It was just one little heart that was random by itself, which is exactly what you get in the sampler packs. So I thought we're throwing it on there just because. And then I also pulled out from, I have just one of, uh, it's an iris container filled with all of those, I'm going to say it again, just because embellishments, those things you collect, the one-offs, maybe someone gave them to you and they don't match other collections. I know we all have them. <laughs> so I pulled out from there uh, that bow that I made. That's a homemade bow I used a tutorial from Tori Basal to create and it's one of my practice ones that turned out cute, so I just ended up keeping it. And then that Brad, I don't know where that came from. And these chipboard letters that spell out smile, those came from Basic Gray. I think they might have just been the last little pieces in the in like a 6 by 12 sheet of chipboard. And so I popped those out and got rid of the 
the negative and then just kept those letters and they're white and yellow so I thought that worked really well and I just wanted to have that other embellishment cluster down at the bottom because I feel like it gives your eye another place to go it kind of breaks up the pattern again and gives your eye a place to rest and when it's down there you can start to notice all of the layers of paper that I've built up so I think that uh, that kind of just worked out as a fluke that I had those three elements and they happen to work really well. Plus, I think the title Smile is kind of a sarcastic title because it's what we always tell our kids, right? Okay, everybody smile and we never get those cute smiles and we're definitely not doing cute smiles in our photos. So there's a little bit of kind of playfulness there. And the last thing I'm doing here just to, I wanted to add a little bit of movement and a little bit of kind of a really bright contrasting color and something that I could put in all of my little embellishment clusters. So I grabbed some embroidery floss and tucked those into the flare and just under that little and um, brad and that's it. That's my layout. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions, you can leave them for me in the comments and be sure to check out the blog and the Wild Whisper Design store. You can use DT Gen at checkout for 10% off of your purchase. Until next time, happy scrapping. Bye.